second forum lecture this year. My name is Federica Goffi. I'm an assistant professor at the Azrieli School of Architecture and Urbanism at Carleton University. And before introducing tonight's speaker, I'd like to uh, recognize our sponsors, or Uniform Urban Developments. For more than 50 years, Uniform has been adding to Ottawa's building landscape, most recently with unique urban infill projects that demonstrate attention to de details, original and lasting architecture. And it is now my pleasure to introduce to you tonight's accomplished speaker, Alessandra Cianchetta. Alessandra is a partner at AWP and AWP HHF Paris and Basel based interdisciplinary offices whose portfolio of award-winning designs ranges from major large-scale public projects to temporary installations. They work on a wide variety of programs, architecture, landscape design, strategic planning, and urbanism. Among some of their most uh, recent projects, the French Pavilion for the Architect Architecture Biennale in Sao Paulo, Brazil, 2007, the Lantern Pavilion in Sandr, Norway, 2008, nominated for the Miss Van der Rohe Award in 2009, and Alessandra will be presenting this project tonight, the Sculpture Park for the Lam Museum of Modern Contemporary and Outsider Art in France, 2010, the Sculpture Park for the Lam Museum of Modern Contemporary Art in France, the public re redesign of Capodichino Airport in Italy, in collaboration with Richard Rogers. Alessandra has also curated and designed exhibitions for major cultural institutions, such as the City of Architecture and Heritage, in Pavillon de l'Arsenal in Paris, and the Fondazione Adriano Livetti in Rome. She has published books and essays in the field of architecture, and amongst those, Alvaro Siza, Private Houses, 1954-2004, published by Schira in published by Skira in 2004, and Nightscapes, Nocturnal Landscapes, Gustavo Gili, 2009. She lectured and exhibited her work at many architectural venues worldwide, Paris, London, Milan, Lausanne, Barcelona, Beijing, Oslo, Delft, and New York. Alessandra was trained as an architect at La Sapienza in Rome, at San Madrid, and ETSA Barcelona, and later attended advanced studies on criticism and landscape theory at UPC Barcelona and Her S. Paris, Riba 2006. She was awarded the French Ministry of Culture Prize for Best Young Architects in 2006. Her lecture tonight is titled Subtle Substances and Recent Project. So with no further ado, please welcome Alessandra Cianchetta. Hi, good evening everybody and thanks for, for coming. I'm really delighted to be here with you tonight and present you some of the few projects we've been developing and realized since our office was created in Paris in 2003, now seven years ago. So as Federica said, uh, we are a multidisciplinary practice. We are not only architects, one of the three partners is a philosopher as well, and this is an important issue for us, and rather atypical and hybrid. Uh, if we compare ourselves to other young practices, at least in France, I, I would say the, the context is important because what the size of practices is not the same in Europe uh, and North America. So why we are atypical? Um, because we like to focus to very different kind of projects. We, we don't like to limit ourselves to one specific architect field, like architecture or landscape or, or urban planning. So we do all the scales, uh, starting from temporary installation to very, very large scale uh, public commission and urban, urban planning and strategic scoping studies. And it, we feel it's important for us to, to touch to to, to all this complexity of scales together uh, and not just limit it oneself to, to one thing. Uh, whereas it's not a very practical issue or, or attitude, uh, we are aware. And uh, um, from the very beginning, another um, thing we decided it was to work internationally, which is not common for, for a young uh, French practice. 
of our size, we are about uh, 15 people, 10 to 15 people. And another uh, point was to um, place collaboration with other practices or individuals at the core of our activity. So all the projects I'm gonna show you here are based, or most of them, are based in collaborative pro processes with, with other people, which is something that, that um, obliges to a certain openness and absorption, and also a lack of ideology, whereas it, it is important to share the same values and the same uh, ideas. And these values for us are, uh, well, it, to attach a certain importance to subtle st substances of architecture, those elements that are not tangible, uh, like light, air, night, time, flows, atmospheres. Another important subject for us is the, is the link in between uh, landscape and architecture, is the wish to reconcile it, these two disciplines as a whole. Uh, and then uh, an innovative confrontation between symbol and news and that renew the perception of the built environment through our design. So, but then you, you won't find much theorizing here tonight in my talk. Uh, I, I prefer to, to show the projects and, and let you draw the conclusions. So uh, I'm gonna focus on a built um, project uh, we did in Norway, in Stavanger, um, a couple of years ago, uh, the Lantern, and then on a lost competition in London, which is a milestone for us, then a nighttime experimental program in Rome and a bit everywhere in, in Europe, uh, and finally some large-scale uh, public commissions we are uh, doing right now. Uh, so let me start with the, with this couple of projects. This is the Stavanger, it's a view of, uh, of the coast in northern Norway. Uh, Stavanger is the second fastest growing uh, city in, uh, in Norway, uh, thanks to, to oil, basically. And Sandnes, where our project is located, is immediately nearby. Um, so this, this project was a, was a winning entry um, of an international competition that was launched on the occasion of Stavanger being capital of culture <coughs> in 2008. And um, the competition was called Norwegian Wood because it had to deal with wood in an innovative way because the, the steering group and the city wanted to, to be like a showcase for innovative and, and environmentally friendly architecture. So this project is a good start for us because it's the, mm, it's the fruit of a, a collaborative process that we did with, a, with another young practice, a Norwegian practice called Atelier Oslo. Uh, we're just beginning at the time and now they just won the uh, Oslo National Library last year. Uh, so it was a good start for them too. And um, it's another good example, another good point is that the, 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 the site is set quite afar from our um, office and so we shows that we, we do like traveling. We have an openness for being elsewhere all the time. And, uh, and then it's important because it's a public realm project but it, it stresses this, this, this idea I was talking about, about the mm, confrontation between symbol and, uh, and uses, and you will see why. So um, the city of, of Sanness is the, looks like a small one, but it's the second fast growing city, as I said, and it's uh, right now split in two parts. Um, there's a part uphill, which is very, uh, dense, it's mainly residential, there are small wooden houses and shops. Uh, then there's the railway here, you can see just below the, the, the red part. And, uh, and an open wider part just towards the harbour. Um, and the city lacked a, a precise identity. Uh, so th this project was, the brief was to mm, basically to produce um, a roof, a sculpture, a roof, uh, placed in this main pedestrian area, the Langata pedestrian area. Um, this, this roof had to be seen from, from very afar, from the railway and from the, from the hills. Uh, and there was an ambition to, to do something that wouldn't be just design, just a nice piece of design. 
uh, bat, uh, but also create a symbol for, for, for the urban identity of the, of, of the city that lacked one. Um, and so this is where the, this is where the lantern is, is located. And we did have to use wood as well, but in an innovative way, and to redesign all the public realm, all, all, the, all the square. Um, to start with, this, this place was quite narrow uh, for the ambitions of the, of the brief, uh, for an object to be seen from, um, from afar. Then the, the point was not only to design a shelter, but to design something that would uh, call for other uses of the public space. So um, a place to shelter like informal meetings, music and markets and so on, but also just call for creativity, for more uses in a public space, in a place uh, which is cold and where you don't generally meet out in a square. It's not Italy or southern France here. So um, the issue of light was, a, was an important one. So you see now the, some of the points set in the brief where the space had to be continuous uh, to, to, to create a flexibility in uses and the, uh, the object had to be positioned so to have a, um, a, a great visibility from afar and to be covered because it does rain quite a lot there. Uh, another important issue was to make the, the greatest use of light, of the available light because there's not much light there. Um, so we thought we, we, we had a workshop in Oslo and, and then in Paris, uh, and we have this workshop creative session using works, uh, references, and, and really before getting to a formal approach, we try to, to explore other ways for expressing ideas. And, and then the, at, at the end we chose this, this, this image of a, it's a very simple, even uh, extremely synthetic um, form of a uplifted house, which is quite inspired by the old motives of Norwegian architecture uh, and of the barns that are uplifted so to keep the food out of uh, animals. Uh, and then, then a few, the columns that would be like inspired to, to Gothic system of trees, uh, and, and that's it. So. An issue was the, the, the transformation of this object throughout the day, so uh, to, have a, to have a very nice space if, if there was sun, if with, with, with clouds or rain, uh, and also at night. So that's why this object is called the lantern, because it has to, to glow like a lantern at night. Um, so here you see other of the things we've been talking about, about transparency and Hate. So that was the design. The, the, the ground of it, so the, the design of the square was, was intended to be like a, like a carpet. So really, to, because hospitality is another theme we, we give, we attach a great importance to. So the, really the public space, the space where you don't have to uh, have a specific uh, Need. I mean, it's not a commercial space. It's a space where uh, a market can take place, or music can take place, or you can have just nothing. You can just have the pleasure of being there. So, this idea of the carpet, and here it is. So, this is about the yes, the thing I was talking about about the, the innovative confrontation between uses and symbols, so very simple use, it's like a, a local market and an object that, that really gives a symbol to, to a place that lacks uh, a precise identity. So here it is at night. Uh, from a construction point of view, uh, this lantern is as a, as a concrete base uh, and then uh, an important thing for us was to, to, to avoid, uh, to have uh, this sensation of lightness, of light weight, to have an abstraction in the skin of the, of the roof itself, that had to, to be made in wood. So we wanted to avoid a primary and secondary structure for this roof. And so we designed this, this, this double grid skin with uh, slates of glass on it so that the, the roof would be like a uniform object, 
with no primary beans or with just like some sti steel joints, of course, but with an idea of something light, like uh, an uplifted roof, really. Um, so you got this roof, then the the wood structure, which is made of uh, like nine centimeters per nine centimeters laminated pine, uh, and then the, you got the the columns that are not placed at the exact place at the angles, so that you create a kind of blurred sensation when people are in. You don't know if people are sheltered or or if they're out of the lantern. And, and also, we wanted the continuity in between the, the, the floor um, and the roof, like in a Gothic structure. Um, this, these columns are in, uh, in massive oak, and it was the first time it, this kind of wood was used in, uh, in Norway, at least, uh, for, such a, for such a structure. Uh, and so you don't have the, the impression of uh, something finishing. You, you don't see really the joints very well, so it's kind of blur. Uh, so the project, it, it's a very simple one. It's a, it's a lantern, it's a, a roof a structure, even if a bit sculptural. But the, um, the construction of it has been quite uh, challenging because it has involved uh, uh, a great, great work in detailing and uh, the number of joints is, is really impressive and a great energy uh, from the client and from the steering group who, who took the project as their own. So this is one of the best thing as well when a relationship uh, between an architect and client works well. So here we see, uh, this is one of the workshops we had in Paris. We tried to, 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 to research the best, the best way to, to achieve this lightweight sensation for the, um, for the envelope of the lantern and some details. Uh, another issue is, was the was the glass because we couldn't leave it in in wood with no glass to to, to shelter. It's it's a place where there's a there's a consistent amount of rain, uh, and so glass tiles were um, uh, overlapped so to consent movement uh, with a with a printed pattern which would multiply the ref light reflections and the games of shade. Uh, when the sun, sun is there or clouds are there to and they're, they're just over superposed to the to the grid to the wooden grid uh, like um, like a slate uh, system but it's glass so here you see some of the study and the prototype and finally here here it is so here you can see the detail of the of the column just merging in the in the roof more detail and it was all all mo mostly prefabricated and, and and the construction was really really very very fast on site so here you see some images about the about the gothic uh, columns i was talking about and the amount of detailing that it has implied. So it is amazing that for such a well, relatively small project, uh, there was an implication on, of the con not only the client, but the constructors as well, which was really, really great. And the columns also work as benches. So here you see. This is what it looks like uh, at different times of the day. So and at night. Okay, it so it's, it's, it's a quite, a, um, we consider it a successful project in a way that we have a very positive response from the public, which is what we care about. Uh, for us, the, the issue is not just designing uh, a nice object, or a object we hope it will be nice, but also to allow new practices and to uh, really to inspire transformation of spaces and, and, and to provoke creativity out of a thing. So we, we want more things to happen thanks to the environment we have been designing. 
So uh, a similar project, uh, even though the, the brief is completely different, this is an exhibition we designed on the same year for the uh, Paris Urban Center, the Pavilion de l'Arsenal, which is, which is a center for um, studies on urbanism and, and changes going on in, in Paris and to, to inform the citizens of, um, ur of on urbanist policies and so on. And so this was an exhibition we, we were um, designing as designers and we also were curators for a part of it and it's an exhibition about centralities and public spaces in, uh, in modern Paris. Uh, the pavilion is, is, is like a, a military, a former military arsenal, so it's not a neutral place, it's a place that has uh, plenty you see, of vaults uh, and everything. So we, we, we decided to link the theme of the exhibition to the, um, to the design and to create a, a giant column of hair, uh, which is a double skin of EFT, um, and that breaths literally and moves literally. And this, 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 this chimney of light and air symbolizes for us the, the void, the air, because after all public space is the, the empty space left in between buildings, but it is what makes a city breath as well and what articulates the different scales through which we navigate. And so it's, it's a kind of metaphor we apply to the space to make it also uh, more neutral and to, so that the rest of the exhibition show is, is left completely simple, um, as you can see. And this light chimney was literally breathing because the air coming from the, from the roof was entering in, in, in so that by, by different movements of floating and defloating, some information would appear on the skin. And here you see another images. This is another um, couple of buildings. It's another. Uh, it's a competition we lost uh, in a few years ago in London, but it's a milestone project for us. It's um, because it was we were we had just started our practice. It is another collaboration uh, process with a network of European uh, practices. Uh, and we were surprised to be shortlisted in an impressive shortlist of world's leading architects to design, um, to design uh, the new headquarters of the Architecture Foundation in London, which is an institution to promote, an independent institution that you might know, to promote uh, um, architecture and that needed a new house. Uh, so we were very excited by the stakes and by the context and also by this collaborative process, uh, which once again started from concepts to, um, to spring into a design. Um, we, well, we, we were runner-up finally in this shortlist, and Zaha did one uh, shortly after us, and suddenly the project is, hasn't been built, her project hasn't been built because of the forthcoming credit crunch and extravagant running costs. Uh, implied with, um, with their design, uh, but mostly for the credit crunch, I would say. Um, but still, it is a milestone for us because um, because there are many of the things, this relationship between architecture and, and landscape I was talking about is very present here, uh, and also the the fact of working with from concepts to designs um, and using references. Um, and here it is. So this is an image of a, of a workshop we held in Paris. Um, the brief was there like a big house for architecture. So the challenge was for us to bring our understanding, what our understanding what was, or what architecture should express and show of itself as a program in a city. So the, the brief talked about um, a building that would be a magnet, a chapel, a billboard. So to to, to to print out its programs at night. Uh, it's located close to Tate Modern, and it was supposed to be located close to the Tate Modern, uh, and at huge buildings just behind of it. So this would have been a very, very tiny building, like 900 square meters, or, or maybe even less, so like a big house. Um, so there was the issue of uh, 
printing out this program of the of the program of a building like this in the city and the comfort of and the well-being of those who were inhabiting this place um, and so how how to do a magnet a folly uh, a chapel uh, and then the house for architecture so that, that was the challenge and we decided to relate to the history of uh, uh, English architecture and landscape and to articulate a series of concepts uh, that um, at very different roots from uh, from the atmospheres in, in Turner paintings to, well, this is Gordon Matta Clark, so it's not necessarily English, but to, to William Morris and, 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 and above all the British landscape, like people like William Kent and Capability Brown, um, we felt it was important to, um, to conceal things, not to discover things immediately, and to, um, to work on this, this, this merged layers so that this, the building could have a facade, facade that would be a kind of central erotic display and would print out the programs of the foundation at night, uh, act like a billboard at night, but then be like a seasonal, um, ambiguous filter a climatic filter during the day. So we, so here you see the first model. We use it, and this is the section. So it mainly this project artic articulates t three three elements. One is this membrane, this 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 climatic uh, uh, filter um, made in the same uh, material of the of the previous exhibition I've shown you in in Paris. And, and then a house, a cat house, a very simple house whose, whose garden in an inversion process would have climbed up on the roof. So the very steep roof, in fact, hosts a garden. And uh, the house is cut like in a Matta Clark and, so, and it's open towards the rear so that the, what ha what's happening inside is, becomes public towards the outside. So there's a, there's a merge of public space and what's happening in, uh, and then a courtyard in the middle. So um, there were many references in, so here, here you see a model with, with the steep roof and the courtyard inside, and uh, an idea what it would be like at night. There's this idea of ever-changing ever uh, materials, ever-changing perception of, uh, of a space so that the space as a, as a memory is growing and uh, changes. It's, it's, not, it's not something fixed, permanent, mineral. And uh, so the idea of a British uh, landscape architect, so this concealment, you, you never, it was, I think it was Alexander Pope who said, well, you, you never have to find something immediately. You have a, to play an hide and seek to, to see things was behind this, this object. It is a shell of encounters after all. So this is, this is an abstract view of what it would have been during the day. So the seasonal, the seasonal element in it is, is given by this roof, which is, a, which is a vegetal garden that would change over the, over the here. And so another image. Uh, and very briefly, this is a few images of the French pavilion. Uh, it's uh, the French exhibition in Sao Paulo we did where we applied this, this, this same idea of uh, merging layers, mer merging different layers in one. Uh, so this is a show, a temporary show that has to, um, had to take place in the Ibira Puera Park in Oscar Niemeyer's uh, building uh, for one month or so. And the theme of the show um, that year was, was the architecture for uh, living spectacles. So it was a selection of, of over 50 buildings made by um, French architects, some of them very famous, like Jean Nouvel, other one was more emerging, but all with the same theme of, um, of the living theater. Uh, so we decided to, um, to explore further this, this theme we, we, of the merging surfaces and screens and to propose a, um, 
a concept that would be like a special promenade uh, in between the, um, the exhibition where the, each single project was, was overlapped to, to the following ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, as if to show that the, the, the production is what, it, what is important. It's not the single project, it's, it's the fact that the, the country is doing so many projects about living spectacles. And then of course you had uh, more, less uh, atmospheric uh, um, uh, and more and clearer um, displays for information for each of the projects. So that's it. And then I'm, this is another project. It's very different from the previous one. It's an experimental program. We have been in charge um, for, um, for quite a long time, from 2003 to 2007. We, the City on the Move Institute, which is a foundation uh, related to Peugeot Citroën, uh, and uh, directed by um, Francois Cher, a French well-known urbanist, uh, was having a program on night mobilities. Uh, and we were uh, in charge of the experimental part of it, the less scientific part of it, let's say the most creative part of it. So the, the, the brief was, well, we could do whatever we wanted. And of course we hijacked the, the commission a little bit to, um, to, to make it to an ex big experimental project that we led in many, many European cities and even, well, we were even in Canada, in Toronto, um, investigating mobilities at night and using the night as a, a territory for the possible things, for, for what is left possible and for what cities can dare to be. Um, so as a tool of pr prospective urbanism, if we can say for, even for uses that can, after what happens at night, can be left for the day as well. And so we involved, uh, it's another participative project because we involved uh, about 100 different uh, um, people, architects, designers, geographers from, from a variety of disciplines, uh, about 70 institutions in between cities and regeneration authorities and so on, uh, in 18 countries, uh, I think. And each time there was, there was a workshop related to the territory we were going to study, uh, an atlas was produced. Um, here you see this, this is Paris, this is the, um, the banlieue of Paris, the limits in between center and periphery. And uh, um, this workshop was, was like um, the starting point of of full-scale, natural-scale experimentations that would imply, well, there were, we had nomadic dining rooms or uh, signing posts, sensitive signing posts, uh, temporary gardens, uh, temporary bus lines. It was much about public space and mobility issues uh, and, and so on. So some of the projects stayed as projects, but many of them were realized even if for a few hours, uh, just to give a demonstration of what this territory could be. So what was possible to be, if it was possible to, just to have a different bus line of if a train could be elsewhere. Uh, as a notion of uh, reactivating desire in a territory for leftover spaces, spaces uh, uh, that were undergoing transformation and had no identity. Uh, and so the issue of the night, the night was used like, a, like another frontier um, where things were more possible than during the day. But the, um, the, all this, this, this experimentation were mostly uh, program-based more than, more than plastic uh, experimentation. So if, if it was a garden, like, well, this is another map example of the city of Mandresa in Catalonia, and this is what well, an ephemeral garden we did in, in Rome. These were installation for the, that had to last like uh, three, four, five hours as a maximum. And to rediscover places, just to stress the accent on what these places could, could be eventually during the day. 
uh, most of the projects implied uh, uh, mobilities as we, we strictly link the mobility issue to the public spaces issues. And it's something we're working on right now in a, in a bigger scale project we, we won last year in, uh, in Switzerland, in Geneva, where we're doing a, a master plan, a strategic master plan for an area of over 200 hectares, which is doubling the center of Geneva. Uh, and it's mainly logistics and business center. It's gonna be housing as well. And we started to, um, from the public space and from the, from the mobility issues because the rest is too complex to handle. So in a way, this, the things we're doing now are very strictly linked to this, this more experimental things we've been doing. And you see, well, we had a, an impressive, fantastic collaboration of the, this is in Rome, of the city council parks and garden services who were accepting to give us very old, rare plants for just one night to transform like mineral um, and hospital places into urban oases just for one night. And, uh, and of course, this, this has to be seen as a teaser, not as, a, not as something to permanent or not necessarily there as something permanent, but it, just to give a demonstration of that things can be can dare to be different. And this is an uh, analysis we did in Piazza San Silvestro in Rome on a bus stop, like invaded with or orchids. Um, and then we did also, but I won't show them these projects tonight because otherwise I'm gonna be too too long and boring for you, but we, we have designed a few parks in gardens as well. And um, uh, then in 2006 at the Venice Biennale, I met uh, Richard Rogers, who was doing this project in, in Naples, uh, which implies, uh, maybe some of you have heard about it, it's a, it's a new underground line, uh, and there's a panel of worldwide renewed architects doing each one of the underground stations. Uh, and it's a circular station going from the airport to the city center, um, dealing with the uh, intermodal uh, connectivity. And the policy is, is to do not only hubs connected to the underground stations, but also um, to regenerate the public realm uh, around the, the station. So, so it's a double project. Um, and so we were invited to join uh, Richard Roger teams. And it's, it's a good example for you because uh, for us, for me to show you that the collaboration can be really from, of, of a very different kind, but it's, it's always a certain pleasure for us to, to collaborate either with artists or very young practices. Or, or even some of the world's leading architects. We did some work with Norman Foster as well, or Grafton Architects, or, or the examples are, are many. But this is one of the most fertile ones because it's, we really work in a think tank pro process with them. And we deal mainly with the, with the public realm uh, and landscape issues. So here you have, uh, you have the airport, Capodichino Airport here, and the Santa Maria del Pianto. We're doing both the stations, which are, which are strictly connected. And we are regenerating all the airport area. And the Santa Maria del Pianto, which is a former cemetery, not a very nice place right now. So uh, the stake is to, 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 to bring hospitality hospitality and multi and flexible uses in these this spaces. And uh, I'm gonna show you a brief. This is a brief animation of what, uh, yeah that will give you an idea of what the, this is the Santa Maria del Pianto, it's not the Capodichino Airport, it's the Santa Maria del Pianto one. So it's a, it's a multimodal hub with huge, huge um, car parkings because it's a place 
people come from the outskirts of Na Naples, arrive here, and then take buses or the tube to go to the center. And so the, the, the issue was designing um, a big piazza and, and also dealing with the, this, this big car parkings and make them more uh, welcoming and like giving the idea of a, of a big park. Uh, but I'm not talking particularly about this project. It's, it was just to show you that the, the, the scale of our interventions and projects is very, is very different. And it's something we, we like to do, even though, at least in France, uh, well, you're not really allowed to, to do many, many different things. I mean, you should not, right now the trend is to, you have to specialize and do just housing or swimming pools or or landscape architecture, and that's it. Whereas for us, it's important really to, to articulate these different scales and to insist into doing different things and to bring the different things together. And, um, and, I, think, what, and I think we're right. I mean, it's something we like to do this way. Uh, the last image, uh, I'm sorry, I lost it. Yeah. So this is the project I was talking about, and it's, it's what we're doing now. And, and by the way, it's another collaborative process with the uh, HHF, whom we founded even an office in Basel where our neighbors in Sao Paulo, they were doing the, the Swiss pavilion where we, where we were doing the French one. Um, so that's why and how things happen, no? even in a very, yeah, it's in, it's in, in a way that we don't always uh, provoke. So we decided to do this competition. We're the leading team. We do it with them. Um, and you see here the area is... Uh, well, you see probably this, this slide is better to see it. Uh, you have on the, uh, on the top right hand the center of Geneva, and this is the part we're developing. So it's really, it's really big and it's like 230 hectares, uh, and it has um, a housing program in it. Uh, uh, 15,000 new houses are going to be built um, in it because Geneva is a city that lacks housing terribly uh, and you also have most of the biggest Swiss banks having their headquarters there and the Port Franc, the, I don't, I don't know how, how you say in English, the harbors, the Swiss harbors, they're there and you cannot move them or you have logistics and it's a very complex territory but it's a very big stake for the city of Geneva because it's doubling the surface uh, towards the south uh, and so it was too complex to start from the, what is built, from the buildings, uh, because here there's a negotiation and collaborative process but with, the, with the big industrial groups or, the, or, or with the owners of um, the banks and so on, and the Swiss harbors and so on. And so it was decided, the state of Geneva decided to, um, to do this, this competition and to start from the public space and from mobility issues to, to further negotiate the rest. Uh, and so here we are applying uh, uh, all the things you've, you've seen before because we're doing a, we will be doing a kind of exam exemplary public space uh, in here, more lanterns. And we're using the night experiment um, project as a teaser to test things here. Um, and so you see that it all, I'm sorry, well, it all go, goes together in a way. So I think I'm finished now. And then, yeah, I finished my presentation. I didn't want to be too long or so if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. That was very nice. So now I can see you. Uh, I was wondering if there is any question from the audience.
for Alessandra, and always I, I might have a few to get started uh, while they think. I wanted to ask you about this hybrid collaboration that you talked about mm -hmm. in the beginning with a philosopher in the, I guess, the design team. Mm -hmm. Is it the philosopher and architect, or the architects are philosophers? How does that? Mm, no, 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 the philosopher <laughs> is a philosopher. I mean, he, when we started working together, he had studied philosophy and he was writing a book on Merleau-Ponty. So the theme of perception and the perception of environment was, was really at the core of, of his preoccupations. And then finally, little by little, he, he started working more on, on territory, on landscape and perception, but applied to, to architecture. Um, but he still is, is a teacher, is a scholar as well. He writes, he writes a lot. Um, and so for us, it was useful to have him with us because, well, he draws. He draws more than we do. So he really doesn't mind it, the sketches and everything. But apart from this, is um, he has this this kind of external view uh, that is very useful when you're a designer because when you're a designer, you're focused in your design. You get obsessed with it, and so it's very useful to have someone. It's not just there to write your text for uh, to win a competition. This is useful as well, but it's it's more. Uh, to have this dialogue and this 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 kind of maieutical, I don't know if it's a correct word in English, but this kind of process where, where things emerge. And also was a great moderator in all these collaborative processes we have done with other practices. It's not the case of the bigger practices, but it's when we collaborate with practices uh, like ours. Uh, where you don't have to, to, to have a design or a form or you have to be open and to absorb things and it's like playing football in a way. The, the, the fact of being uh, together with other people push, pushes the limits further. You have to be, um, to make a more effort, I think. Well, some people would make the same effort al alone, but the fact of never being alone implies a series of things. And so, and Mark was, is very useful in this, this kind of processes. So that's very interesting. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, we have right on the Hi. question. Uh, Hi. Um, sometimes it seems like we sort of live in a bubble here in North America when it comes to architecture. We don't really know what's going on in, I mean, we know just a little bit, but could you maybe tell us a little bit about the directions in architecture in Europe in general? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not an expert <laughs> about it, but I will try a, a little bit because we work in several European countries, so we have a feel of what it is. Um, I think it's very different from North America, from the US and, and Canada as well. Even though you have huge differences in between Southern Europe uh, and France, it's, it's, it's a bit, France and Germany are an hybrid, an hybrid case. It's an intermediary position because then you have England and Scandinavia that are much more similar to to what's going on here, I, I guess. I mean, you have bigger corporate practices, um, whereas in France um, or Spain or southern Southern Europe, not so much. And so this has an impact on the on the production as well. The structure, the economic structure of a practice is very uh, is very important for 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 what is produced, because the conditions have, a, have an influence. So you, now you do, you do have, even in England, where, where you have bigger practices I can compare to the, the ones you have here, uh, even in England you have like uh, artists, architects as well, and smaller groups that are not necessarily uh, teaching as well. So there's an, an economic, uh, Mm, need to, to make the practice work, even working with smaller projects, a smaller team. Uh, things are getting, I think it's an interesting place to, to be. There are interesting projects. And, and in France, we got a lot of public commissions. There's, a, there's, a, there's really, really a lot of um, public competitions going on. Not all of them are very interesting. Sometimes it's just the extension of uh, 
you know, of a primary school, nowhere. So does not not tell all the time you have you have a, an ambitious brief, which is what makes then an ambitious project as well, or an ambitious demand on the client. But nevertheless, there's, there's, there's a lot there's a lot of public omission as well. So this is quite uh, this is quite good, I think, or at least for for the kind of work we. We do, but I don't know if I've answered properly to your question. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you. We've learned so much tonight. Um, I'm particularly interested in the teaser projects that you have, uh, and it sounds like they're global. So almost to pick up on um, your response from the last question is, can you describe the differences in the things that you learnt uh, in a city like Toronto relative to some of the European cities in terms of, you know, re were the agencies you were working with responsive mm. um, or the public, how did they respond? Can mm. you yeah, that? well, the Toronto, tro I wasn't there. It was Mark leading the Toronto project and sadly I wasn't there. But I know it, it was done in collaboration with the Mercer Union. So we had a residency there to develop a project uh, with local artists as well. Um, and then there was a collaboration of the French embassy as well. So yeah, we, 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 for all these projects, we always have a sponsor of one kind. Sometimes in European cities, it's more the, the, the cities than the, the city council or parks and garden or the mobility department of uh, a city. And in Toronto, um, specifically, it was, it, was, it was Mercer Union but with the, with the help of other sponsors as well. So, so. I'd like to follow just in the uh, first question. Um, politicians, uh, the concept of um, architecture, urbanism, and the arts, do you feel that it's a part of uh, your political uh, structures at uh, different levels, federal, or the no, federal and the municipal. Um, the city of Barcelona, for example, mm -hmm. has many, uh, I think it's got a, a, a single institution of planners, um, maybe about 36, they're all architects, at yeah. least that's as I remember. We don't have that here. Mm -hmm. We do not have politicians who know much about architecture who give damn. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't believe in vision because well, it takes too long to get there. No. Well, any, um, would you say that uh, there are any um, politicians? Is it a, a, I mean, you have, yeah. uh, you have competitions. A lot of them are uh, invited, I think. Yeah. Most of them are Most invited. Of them are invited. So you, have to Do you have any open ones? Uh, well, in France, not many open ones, not yeah. many open ones, or it's really just a few. So you have to go through this, 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 this uh, uh, invite competition mm -hmm. process. So you have to apply first, make like a, a, well, the equivalent of a PQQ, a pre-qualification questionnaire, where, where the solidity of your uh, econ economic, financial solidity yeah. of the practice is sometimes not always, huh? but sometimes it's more important than the quality of the references and of the proposals you make because it's, this is getting more and more procedural, more and more um, project management versus quality in architecture. Uh, in France, things are not, not too bad, not too tragic, even though you have to go through this selection and to go through this selection, you have to prove references and you have to put references of a kind, so that's what, why uh, people tend to specialize and do as well swimming pools, so they can prove they do swimming pools without risks for the client, which is not necessary then really an efficient or intelligent thing to, to do, I believe, because there's, um, there's a quality that comes from reflection and not from cut and paste processes uh, about doing always the same thing because I would understand if it were like airport design or hospital or very specific programs of a complexity that demand really a specialization. But right now this is getting to, towards a specialization even for 
you know, the crash like the kindergartens or, or a town hall, which is not really necessary, I believe. But uh, well, this is for the, the competition. So the, the open competition exists, but there aren't so many. So most of the, or you have open competition, but you're not quite sure it's gonna be something that will be built or ever implemented. There, there, there are a few, but it's not the, most of them are, are invited. But, uh, but then yes, there is, there is a political awareness of, of what the public space here is. But I think it's, it's a question of Anglo-Saxon culture and it's, it goes with the ownership of the, of the land as well. Because uh, we do some work in London, we've been invited to several competitions for the Olympic route, for instance, for, for the Olympics in East London. Uh, and I see that, that the way you deal with, with, with land use is, 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 is not the same because the corpus of laws is not the same and because, because it's mostly private. So you can't, and, and because also there's, a, there's an obsession with security issues that, that goes very uh, far. So yes, it's, it's a political approach, it's a cultural approach as well because we we have squares and places and we meet outside in, 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 in mostly in, in warm countries or Latin countries and, and you, you got high streets in, in Anglo-Saxon or you have commercial malls that are public spaces as well. But, uh, but yes, the, what, what, what was done in Barcelona or Lyon as well was possible because there was, there was this, 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 this political awareness and will for the Olympics especially, but it's going on now. Began with the mayor, didn't it, in the yeah, 80s well, and other architects. London is pretty good too. I mean, you have all the architects and Prince Charles making arguments in the yeah. press. <laughs> um, uh, but in your um, uh, invited competitions, uh, is it the architect who is head of the team, uh, or is it the developer? Yeah, th this is a good is question. Here? No, normally it's at least in France. Normally it's it's the architect, and even the competitions were done in England. Uh, we were the leading consultant, but there's there's a trend. There's a yeah, there's a direction things are taking where um, other consultants, like big engineering groups, like. Uh, you know, those that have like 1,000 employees, so a, a bigger turnover and so bigger financial capacity tend to be the leading, um, the leading consultant. So it's happening a little bit, or there are the very big competitions now, um, you also have an investment bank mm -hmm. in the team because the, the city is no longer, we did it, for instance, one with Richard Rogers, for the reconversion of the aerospace campus in Toulouse, that was the former um, airport of Toulouse, the Saint Exupéry airport, to be reconverted into uh, like a campus for technologies for for the aerospace industry. So that was a big master planning, and followed by bigger uh, implementation. And the city, in that case, doesn't have the funds to do it, and no. so in your team you have to to have a bank a or an investor to, mm. to support you. But, yeah. but the, the architect was still the leading consultant in, the, in that case. But that's good if it's the team that has to find the Yeah, the stuff. it's the team that yeah. has to find the right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, being here tonight, thank you.